we've witnessed an increase in uh, peanut allergy over the past few decades. Peanut allergy will now affect up to one in 50 primary school children in the UK. We uh, conducted some 10 years ago a comparative study looking at peanut allergy in Jewish children in the UK compared with Jewish children in Israel and we found there was a tenfold difference in peanut allergy. Peanut allergy was much more prevalent in UK children and almost non-existent in Israeli children. To our great surprise, we found that Israeli infants were eating peanut snacks from as early as four to six months of life. This obviously raised the important question, could consumption of peanut early on in life be preventing the development of peanut allergy? Hence, we decided to conduct the LEAP study to answer this question. We found that a very high percentage developed uh, peanut allergy in the avoidance group and uh, that was about 17 percent of the children developed peanut allergy. If you look at the children who consumed peanuts the rate of uh, peanut allergy uh, was reduced down to about three uh, percent. So that is uh, a greater than 80 percent reduction rate in the rate of peanut allergy demonstrating really that consumption of peanuts was very effective in preventing peanut allergy. I certainly would hope that these findings are taken into consideration in drafting new public health guidelines. I'm not going to suggest specifics at this stage because I think it's important that the professional community has time to digest these findings. I would say, however, that clearly avoidance doesn't make sense. Children who develop eczema in the first six months of life, children who develop egg allergy or other food allergies are more at risk. I would say if you know, to the parent out there, if your child has moderate to severe eczema, eczema requiring steroid creams on a regular basis, if your child has egg or another diagnosed food allergy, you should have your child tested to peanut as early as possible, as early as three or four months of age. There's a very important question we want to answer now, and that is what happens to these children once they stop eating peanuts? Do they remain protected? Do they have to continue eating peanuts regularly, at least three times a week, as per the study, or does it not matter? And we are now answering that question in the Leap On study, where all the children who completed the first six years of the study uh, have been asked to cease eating peanuts, and we will compare peanut allergy in the two groups, and that uh, study should be coming to its conclusion in the next six months or so. Obviously, we want to answer the question about peanut with respect to other foods as well, food allergies such as egg, milk, fish, wheat, sesame. These questions are being addressed in the EAT study. There is currently a huge burden of food allergic disease imposed on our society. The latest figures would suggest that up to 8% of primary school children have a food allergy, be it to peanut, egg, milk, sesame, kiwi or other nuts. It would be really wonderful if we could eliminate or at least very significantly reduce this. We've shown that we can already do this now for peanut and that is a uh, great relief and it's very gratifying to think that we'll be able to prevent peanut allergy in, in many many lives in the UK and other countries using this strategy.